Hey, sweet friends. This will be 10 of the easiest flips you've ever seen me do. Now, this painted box for toys is, I believe it's a silverware box. Might have been a jewelry box, but whatever velvety lining thing that was in there was a little bit ragged, a little bit little bit odd so I just went ahead and tore all that out and used my favorite green moss green chalk paint and then put just one simple little rose transfer on the top and this fabric is beautiful old flower sack material that I just pieced it in there and hot glued it in. Now anything with chalk, wax, chalk paint on it is going to need some kind of seal so I put the wax on and then wiped it back down so that the chalk paint wouldn't chip off. And this made an absolutely perfect little girly box for some girly toys. Little Melissa and Doug paper doll wood magnetic paper doll toys and there was a lot of it that of course I found thrifted and my little girls already know to look in this box my granddaughters to come and play with their pretty little cutouts antique a new sign now lots of little stores Walmart Family Dollar Dollar General have started carrying really cute little decor things but I just like things to look a little less brand new right off the factory line and I like things to look a little more aged so this time I'm using elephant chalk paint just dry brushing it on that means you see that paper towel there that means that I am removing lots of the paint from my brush and just dragging it and sponging it and blotting it around in all the places. Originally this little particular uh, thing, it was only five dollars. This one came from Family Dollar um, way before 4th of July. It was with their 4th of July things and it had that 4th of July ribbon on it which I did not care for. So I took that off and Oh, you can also see that I'm just using some acrylic paint that I happen to have, a big thing of that chestnut color acrylic paint. And mixing up the two of it gives it kind of a rusty and old look. And I'm using the sponge foam brush to make that look worn in and rubbed around. That's just a ripped piece of drop cloth that I made a little bow to put there so it would look less 4th of July and more appropriate just for summer. Rusty Star. This is the same, same kind of method. Take a little bit of your paint. This was only $3 from Family Dollar. I thought they had some really cute things. And this is fine the way it is, but my vibe and my aesthetic is rusty, beat up, old. Somebody left this in the back of the garage for about 40 years. <laughs> That's more my style. So, I, of course, I have to take a perfectly good piece of decor and beat it up and add paint to it until it looks as if it is something that you discovered in the barn loft. <laughs> but... It's amazing to me how you can do this kind of thing and it just transforms a piece. It really does. So this, this is kind of the same approach as the previous one, but because it is straight onto this metal with nothing else, that's just easy to do. Now during the 4th of July, I put those just inside my front door in the foyer there. I had the very cute little twig vine and uh, put it near that and I'll remind you that that wood flag was also five dollars from Family Dollar and I made it look old because it was of course brand new looking 
when I first got it. Enamelware dupes. Now I love to find pieces of old enamelware at the thrift store, but you don't come across them very often. But what you do come across are 50 cent or $1 items of just aluminum old cookware. Any kind of little metal pieces are appropriate for this. You can see I have taped off just enough to get the edges painted with my moss green chalk paint. And then here come those transfers. I'm going to link the transfers. They're from Amazon. I'll put it in my description box. So if you would like to order some, I hope they still have them. Sometimes after I order them, they'll go missing. All right, now you see those little tiny pots of color of paint? Those are from my paint by numbers. I, I love to do paint by numbers. And I have found that they don't last forever, but they last long enough to do a few more things with, especially when you want a variety of shades. They're handy to have those. So I love the old timey peony. I love those flowers. I think they're just gorgeous. And I thought these, these turned out precious. And again, rusty beat up that little pie pan. When I bought it, it was stuck inside another round pot of some kind. That's why it's all bent, because I had to work so hard to get it out. Now, I've, sh I've shared this before, the tiny lamp, but what I wanted to show everyone is that when you're thrifting and you come by these little tiny lamp shades, you know they are actually meant to be for a chandelier, the chandelier lampshades. Well, I'd never seen a tall one before, and I thought that was just adorable, especially the little tiny girl and boy and a little dog on there. But that one didn't have the clip that clips onto the bulb. So I picked up another little shade for 79 cents, I think, and it had some kind of really odd plasticky looking uh, material on it, so I just sacrificed it for the cause. I removed little inner clip thing and had to kind of bend the tips of it with my wire pliers and then I used hot glue. I guess you could use E6000 or if you're really talented special and have lots of equipment you could solder it but hot glue it is for this girl and what I use are the little Christmas lights. Now you can get those all day long, especially around Christmas, at the thrift store for about a dollar each. And they make the most adorable little lights to put on a shelf. I've got one on top of my china cabinet. I've got them on top of my piano. Just tuck them in wherever you're doing decor and they look beautiful. Now, refreshing a frame, this vintage beautiful needlepoint frame uh, artwork I bought it in this frame and I like the frame but knowing that I intended to use it for my 4th of July patriotic decor that green was just killing me so and, and I, I'm a green person I really like green but I just felt like it was too distracting for the vibe and the reason I think it's green is because I feel sure this was done in the 70s when that particular avocado green was very popular you know even appliances came in that color so I brought out some of my lacquer lacquer is the name of that red color uh, chalk paint and gave it a nice coat and of course it dries almost instantly but Guess what happened when I pulled my blue tape off? Well, <laughs> it pulled some of the gold away and there comes that avocado green shining through again. So uh, I just picked up my, my uh, antique wax. That's Waverly Antique Wax. Waverly products are available at Walmart. That just makes it easy. Everybody has to buy groceries anyway at Walmart. So they, they realize this. Um, that's how they that's how they make their money. So I just went back over it with the antique wax so that that avocado green was again not the focus, but it it made it it made it do exactly what I needed it to do. 
Now, tone down a painting. What I mean by this is, this painting just, it just looked too, too bright. And you can see I've got yet another painting. I thought I was going to use both of them side by side. So I wouldn't have had to do this, but I ended up doing it because I felt like it was just too bright for the, for the moody kind of aesthetic that I was going for. Now, you know, don't do this if it's a $500 original oil painting. This was an original oil painting of some kind. Um, and we looked it up and I almost got sick to my stomach. My sister found one that was worth a lot of money. But then we decided, you know what? I paid $4 for it. I'm just going to enjoy it for what I paid for it. So I, t I took um, just watered down elephant gray chalk paint and just dragged it across and then just pounced on it a little bit with a paper towel and just kept on until it looked as old and moody as I wanted. So, you know, don't be deterred when you're in the thrift store by a painting or any kind of artwork that looks a little bit of a different tone than you wish it did because that can be fixed. You can you can alter the the mood of it just by giving a little layer. Oh, I really enjoyed having that up there for my 4th of July season. And I keep it up all of July. Framing a card. Okay, you're about to find out what happened to the little happy, happy doggy. Happy Dachshund. Thank you everyone for replying and helping me decide what to do about my little dog whether it should be in the dark frame or the light frame and I ended up putting it in the dark frame and I covered the glass with some linen fabric and then I used little uh, foam mounting blocks on the back of the card it was actually a little teeny tiny note card that came with an envelope from a, sh a precious shop in Cave Spring um, but I wanted it to have some dimension to it, so I, I mounted it on the outside of the glass, and I put the little, <laughs> put the little um, foam mounting blocks in there. You could get those anywhere, including Dollar Tree. <laughs> Look how happy he is! He's just so happy, and I decided he needed to be in my foyer so that um, we could remember to be happy as we uh, are. <laughs> going out and coming in <laughs> and look at this gorgeous little print now I just print things like this I just print them on my printer at home or I send it to Staples you know online and I thought that looked perfect with all my blue willow and seashells up there so I had a time deciding which frame to use but look how good that looks too the little pedestal stool. I found the stool with the sunflower on top of it and I, you know I can't leave well enough alone. I decided I wanted to make it so that I could use um, use this just for different seasons and different different kind of styles not just sunflower type styles. I decided it would go with more so I used, this is a cutout from Dollar General, I think. Yeah, Dollar General in their craft department. I tried to sand down the printed, but it must have been printed on with some kind of ink. And it wasn't coming down. So I thought, well, you know, once I get some Waverly Antique Wax over it, it's going to make it less vivid, you know, less contrast. A little more subtle anyway so that's what I did and again with the hot glue you know none of these things are going to stand up to a hurricane wind but I don't expect to have a hurricane wind coming through my home I expect to treat it rather gently <laughs> now if it's something I think that my sons are gonna be handling um, we better put on some gorilla glue but in this case it's just fine it did just fine and I love that I think that's the sweetest <laughs> it was quick you know I enjoy quick flips I'm, I'm not I'm not unwilling to do complicated but easy flip boy that's nice all right now this is something that maybe you're not aware of Dollar Tree sells 
these document frames that are eight and a half by 11, which is of course the size of, you know, a printout copy paper. So, you know, go to Pinterest, print at home or use their staples online copy service. It's, it's cheap. It's not even, and you can actually um, select a cardstock, a thicker paper, if you do send it to Staples. And if you would like to see all the images I have collected, you can find me on Pinterest. Look at that 15 year old picture of me. Um, I like to be 15 years younger than I really am, so I'm not changing the picture. So there I am. And you'll, you'll see, look, there's that coral blue printout that you just saw before. And I, I love vintage art. I love vintage art. So I've got a nice little category of vintage art. You can look through all the stuff that I've got on my Pinterest. And this particular time, I did use just different layers of acrylic paint on those black frames and I did take the glass out because I just wanted it to look you know not shiny I just wanted it to be more natural so I had found patriotic images and put those inside the little certificate frames for a dollar 25 each now here's something extra that I did just just because it's invisible do you you can't tell it's there I found the most beautiful piece of wrought iron wall art that fit just perfectly in front of my fireplace but you couldn't see it so I took um, probably probably it's probably some elephant chalk paint I'm trying to remember it's been a little while since I've done this uh, and I decided that just to give it just a hint of some kind of color other than black so that it would show up i mean just it's got to show up a little bit or what's the point of having it so <laughs> i mean i didn't want it to stand out like a a neon sign but i did want it to show up a little bit so i just took different layers of maybe some plaster plaster is my favorite neutral color of chalk paint and some elephant gray I think different areas okay so you can see that I've got my mantle all set up for the 4th of July and my little 1940s doggies there and look behind the children's toys <laughs> and my little fake fireplace which I love you know I can move it around like furniture it's not installed it's a lot of fun and it's been a lot of fun sharing all this with you thank you for watching please please subscribe click like leave a comment i reply to every comment and i love conversing with you in the comment section be blessed